In this video, we'll look at the income statement, the cash flow, and the balance sheet independently, individually. Go through each one of them and talk about some of the things to keep in mind as you go about doing financial planning for the venture and looking at building your financial statements that will be used as your pro forma financials. First of all, on the income statement. Most important is to keep distinct the unit sales from your dollar sales. Dollar sales, you know, five million dollars, whatever, doesn't really mean anything to a reader unless they can translate it into what your operation is actually doing. If you say you're going to sell a million units at five dollars a unit, a million units, one can think about what does an operation that sells a million units look like? What is going on behind the scenes? What are they doing? Has that been described? Do I understand how they make a million units? How they sell a million units? Who the customers are that are going to be buying these units of sales or service that they're delivering? And independently, I can say, is $5 a fair price for one of those units? And from that, I can independently, in my own, with my own thinking and my own research and knowledge and expertise, I can decide whether or not this particular business has the potential, as described in the rest of the business plan, to deliver this kind of revenue by deciding on the unit sales and the price translating it into revenue and the like. Accounting numbers is nothing more than translating real world operations into financials, right? You want to keep costs distinct from expenses. The reason for that is costs you have to expend just to get the revenue. In other words, if you're giving, you're running a taxi service, you have to pay for the car and the driver to pick somebody up even to get the revenue. So there's no chance whatsoever of you cutting back on your cost and still keeping your business going. If you're having trouble and your costs are starting to exceed your revenue, in other words, people are not willing to pay as much anymore for your product, your business really has no future, no potential, because you've got to still pay the driver and the taxi cab and, the, and the, um, the gasoline and the like and any other fees just to be able to pick up the customer. So if you cut that, you can't even get the revenue. That's the cost of goods sold. Expenses, on the other hand, if you run into some tough times and your revenue is in decline, you don't have to have as many cabs and as many driver hours and you can still make a little bit of profit on the ones you sell and you can try to cut your expenses a little bit. Right? They're di very different in terms of the dynamics and what the options are for your business going forward. And don't forget the channel costs as well. That is, if you're not selling directly to customers, you don't get the full revenue. You only really get the value that you get from a wholesale price. On the income statement, your personnel costs are typically the lion's share of a startup business. Um, that's why one reason why technology and software companies that make the software, initially it's the development costs, but once the system is up and running, it can be duplicated rather, rather cheaply, almost for nothing, and in fact, in some cases, for nothing. And therefore, you can have quite a bit of revenue with a smaller level of personnel. But certainly in the startup, and certainly for most companies, Personnel is the lion's share of what your costs are getting started. Don't also, also don't forget that uh, product development, getting yourself up and running, getting your product ready and tested, you know, alpha tests, beta tests, and market testing, making changes and the like, takes time. So typically, a business will start long, you know, several months before it actually starts generating revenue. You don't start first month with a million dollars in revenue or even a hundred thousand dollars in revenue. You say, how many units am I going to sell in that first month? And it may be you're building your product in the first couple months. So there's zero units, no revenue for the first few months. Not uncommon at all, depending upon your particular business. So keep in mind there's a ramp up that goes and you have to be able to justify the fact that you're going to be selling some units. You'll be selling the units that you take credit for. If you're starting a restaurant, for example, it will take you at least a month or two to get yourself set up. So that first month you may have no revenue, second month no revenue, third month you may open for lunch and you have a grand opening in the sixth month, something like that. So you would show number of meals you sell and you show that ramping up over time. Looking at the cash flow, one important point that you may be asked if you do this and go actually talk to investors, they'll talk about deferred tax credits and the like. These can have significant value, 
We don't talk about them in this class. It's sort of like more of an advanced class. But it turns out if you have, have um, accumulated losses, you can take advantage of those because you can get tax credits on future profits. There could be some real significant benefit to certain investors of that aspect of the business, believe it or not. But we don't deal with it, but keep that in mind because you may be asked about it. It's something you should not sort of say, I don't know what that is. Uh, you should just say we have we don't have any or we don't have um, we don't ha we're not we don't have that analysis with us or uh, that's something we can talk about offline. We simplify depreciation in this analysis, but again, doing this for real, particularly if you have significant capital equipment or real estate equipment or real estate assets, uh, you're going to have depreciation. Typically, you'll have a schedule for that and the like, and we can talk about that separately as well. Don't forget about working capital. It is probably the thing that can sink a good business. You can have an extremely successful business, run out of working capital, not be able to have access to working capital, and fold up. Lots of companies actually are successful on the product. They have customers they like that like it. They'll continue to buy it. They're underfinanced because they did not take into account the fact that they have to have inventory. They have to have money to buy inventory to support their growth. They have to have money to loan customers money if there's accounts receivable. They have to have money that's in the business, and if you haven't planned for that, you can start having a lot of dissatisfied customers when your shelves are empty, you have no inventory, you can't get it, they come back and it's still not there, and all of a sudden your business can crash. Also, make sure that the equipment, what plant you need, what products, you know, what um, like heavy equipment or kitchen equipment, um, automobiles, trucks, computer equipment, technology equipment, um, what those needs are over time. Uh, as a business grows, those needs tend to increase as well. So there has to be replacement associated with plants and equipment. And of course, you net all that out to get your free cash flow, which tells you the value of the business. On the balance sheet, keep it simple. Don't go into a lot of accounts. Just a few accounts, cash, your asset accounts, cash, your, you know, your current assets, cash and inventory and receivables. Your longer term accounts, you know, you have uh, your asset accounts, you'll have your like equipment, like if you have a car, truck, or whatever. Um, and then you have your equity accounts, your retained earnings, and your paid in capital, and any maybe some debt accounts if you do have uh, some sort of a loan. Very simple. We keep it simple, certainly, for what's necessary for our project. Um, just keep those things very simple. It's more like a checkbook than anything else. Balance sheet can be scary. The way we do it here, however, and the way we do it in a startup typically, is more like a checkbook than anything else. Very simple, like a couple of checkbooks. Very simple, okay? And that is, that's really the best way to do it. It's not scary when you realize what you're really doing is just keeping track of where the money's gone, whether it's what you borrowed, who you owe, what you've spent it on, the assets you have, what you have on the shelves for inventory and the like, what you've loaned for cut to customers, what you still have to pay suppliers, and then how much cash you have in that account. That's really all it is. Okay, so we'll put that all together as well and talk more about it. Always be thinking income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet. That's what we'll be developing. And in the next lecture, I'll tell you what's expected in the final business plan itself. Okay, so in terms of the number of years and all that sort of thing. But before we do that, the last thing that you always want to have in your financial statements is a series of notes, which essentially give a sense of what the assumptions are, what, a, what is a unit, how you calculated your unit sales, how you calculated your cost of goods sold, maybe some information about your lease cost and what sort of terms you have on a lease for your location, equipment that you've purchased. You'll have different schedules that describe um, what your expenses are. So no one, anyone that has a, that's reading the financials closely and has a question, they can go to the notes and at least get an initial answer to their question about how do they calculate these units? What do they think they're going to be able to sell per month? Or what is in a unit? How do you calculate a unit? Or what are the cost components in their unit cost? You know, there'll be schedules associated with that. This makes for a complete picture of how you figured out your pro forma financial statements. So as I said in the last uh, video of these of this five uh, video set on venture financial planning. We'll talk about what is in a typical business plan, and in particular, what I'm looking for in the financials for the business plan uh, within our entrepreneurship class.